Earlier this year, I visited Malaysian Borneo. It was a trip of a lifetime to see plants growing in their natural rainforest habitat. And top of my list to see was Rafflesia. This genus holds the largest flower in the world, a flower so gigantic, a parasite so unreal that you might mistakenly think it was made of plastic. But that smell, oh my goodness, that is very, very real. I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and I hope you'll join me in my trip to Borneo to see perhaps the most iconic of all flowers. You're very welcome to this video visit to the foothills of Mount Kinabalu in northern Borneo, where I've come to hopefully see the Rafflesia in flower. I'm staying in the Malaysian Sabah district at Pouring Hot Springs, which is 39 kilometres east of the Kinabalu Park entrance, although the legendary mountain dominates the whole area. As soon as I arrive, I immediately put on my boots to go see where the Rafflesia grows. Rafflesia keithii abounds in this area, and if a Rafflesia is in flower, locals put up a sign along the side of the road so that you can go in and see it. According to Google Maps, the area I need to walk to is 2.5 kilometres away. Adena Gardens is a place where I believe Rafflesia is currently in flower. The walk does seem like a very long two and a half kilometres though, so whether Google Maps is inaccurate or whether the humidity followed by torrential rain is affecting my judgement, I can't say. The scenery is breathtaking, with the misty rainforest never far from the road and a smattering of houses alongside. There are plenty of interesting plants along the side of the road too. I find that the undergrowth is studded with Mimosa pudica, the sensitive plant, the one that reacts to touching by curling its leaves inwards. Such a fussy little plant in a home environment, yet here it grows as a weed. Finally, after what seems like a very long walk, we see signs for Rafflesia in bloom and turn off the road to follow them. So what do I hope to see today? The Bornean region of Sabah is home to three species of Rafflesia. Rafflesia keithii, pricei and tengu adlinii. Rafflesia keithii is present in this area near Mount Kinabalu and although not the biggest Rafflesia in the world, keithii is up to 80 centimetres in diameter. The biggest Rafflesia of all is Arnaldii and it can extend to a whopping 120 centimetres, that's four foot. But such magnificence is short lived. Each flower lasts a mere five days. When I go in, I'm told that there is a Rafflesia in bloom here, but that it's on day five. Let's have a look, shall we? Rafflesia is a parasite that lives on the tetrastigma vine, a liana from the grape family. It's endoparasitic, which means it lives within the host plant until its buds eventually erupt through the host's skin. Rafflesia jettisoned its gene for photosynthesis millions of years ago. Rafflesia is a single heat-producing flower with no stem, 
leaf or root. And to attract its carrion loving pollinators, it smells like rotten meat. Rufflesia is incredibly rare and your chances of ever seeing this flower in real life are reduced by a litany of super specific requirements and adverse factors that affect it. Firstly, it only lives in a handful of subtropical and tropical places. It requires the tetrastigma plant as its host and although there are perhaps 137 species of tetrastigma worldwide, only six to seven species are suitable for Rafflesia. Flower buds take six to nine months to bloom and are very vulnerable during this time. Flowers then only last about five days. A further complication is that flowers are dioecious, so either male or female. For fertilization to occur, two flowers not only have to bloom simultaneously, but one must be of each sex, and they must bloom within a mile of each other, close enough for the pollinators to ferry genetic material between them. I could happily stay here all day and feel so lucky, yet completely humbled by this miracle of nature. However, I haven't yet reached the Adena Rafflesia garden, so let's walk a little further down this road and see if we can find it. The Adena garden seems more geared up for tourism, both national and international. A bus of Japanese tourists arrive at the garden at the same time as me. Rufflesias are government protected in this area, so sightseers are kept back by fencing. This prevents us accidentally stepping on newly emerging buds. You can also see how buds and flowers are protected by makeshift canopies to stop weather damage. The focus of today's attention is a three-day-old Rufflesia flower, fresher than the last one we saw. Can you smell? Yeah. Can you smell? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm told this flower measures 65 centimetres in diameter. Rafflesia keithii can measure up to 80 centimetres. The flower is almost synthetic looking, but the activity of its fly pollinators let us know that we're looking at something very organic. I want to wander a little further in this garden because I read, before coming to Borneo, how local people in the Ranau Pouring Springs area have attempted Rafflesia propagation with some success. How Rafflesia appears to occur naturally within this plot because the owner inoculates vines, reputedly augmenting the population. Unfortunately, I can't verify any of this due to language obstacles, but there do seem to be an enormous number of developing buds here. There are also Rafflesia flowers that have finished blooming and these are completely fascinating too. They include a twin flowering, quite the unusual occurrence. According to an article published in 2023 by the New Phytologist Foundation, the garden yields about seven blooms a year, earning about 2,500 ringgit, which is approximately $550 from tourists. You'll be pleased to further learn that there has been a major breakthrough in the propagation of this iconic plant. The breakthrough came from the Bogor Botanic Gardens in Indonesia, where in 2022, botanist Sophie Mursidowati succeeded in blooming Rafflesia from seed she had planted. Botanists had been trying to do this since 1818, and it had long been thought impossible outside of the plant's natural rainforest habitat. 
A December 2021 article in National Geographic notes that the same botanist was the first to successfully cultivate Rafflesia patna through grafting, using a method previously applied to mountain ash plants in the United Kingdom. She grafted infected tetrastigma vine collected from the rainforest onto plants at the Botanic Garden and eventually got the Rafflesia to bloom. One final interesting fact. Rafflesia are remarkable for showing a large horizontal transfer of genes between them and their host plants. This is well known among bacteria, but not higher organisms. The mitochondria of Rafflesia have exchanged genes with the mitochondria of their tetrastigma host over the course of their joint evolution. Tetrastigma, like Rafflesia, is also dioecious. Before I end this video, I'd like to share with you some footage from Pouring Springs, a nature reserve and hot springs beside where I was staying. The place is named after the giant bamboo that predominates in this area. The most enjoyable part for me was the climb up to the rope bridge, surrounded by giant amorphophallus and other impressive plants all too close to photograph and then the rope bridge crossing itself. I was on numerous rope bridges in Malaysia, but this one was definitely the wobbliest and the most fun. I did spot an ape in the trees, possibly a gibbon, but was told that any apes or monkeys are really unusual for this area, but I saw him and he hung around for ages eating fruit until some other noisier visitors arrived. There is a large Rafflesia garden in the Pouring Springs Reserve showing representations of the three Rafflesias found in Sabah. It was lucky though that I'd already seen Rafflesia keithii down the road because I didn't spot a single bud in this purpose-made Rafflesia garden. The giant bamboo orchids, Arundina, were impressive though, but the orchid garden itself less so. Due to heavy rains, the hike was inaccessible, but I did have a look around the whole rest of the reserve. It was badly maintained and disappointing. But it was definitely worth visiting to see the Rafflesia just down the road. And now we've come to the end of this Rafflesia video and we've seen a total of six Rafflesia keithii in various stages of bloom and numerous buds. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you'll check out the previous one I made about my visit to the 130 million year old rainforest of Taman Nagara. I'm linking to that video right here and also in the video description down below. I wonder, what is your number one wish list plant? What would you love to see more than anything in the world? I'd be very happy to hear about it in the comments down below. In the meantime, thank you as always for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.